importantly, the way forward. Members. Members are rarely available in uh, Nairobi on uh, Friday. So Correct. this was moved on because of uh, mm. some an, an emergency. Uh, it says that from Tuesday, not Monday and not Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday of that week. Can we come? The, can can it be the Wednesday of that week? That will show of in as, getting. As you understand, uh, in as much as you have cabinet on, uh, <laughs> on uh, was it Tuesday is Thursdays. Members also have other cabinets in their constituencies. So that day. It should not be a Friday. Chair, thank you. We are looking then at bringing forward to either Wednesday 13th or Wednesday the 20th. Wednesday? 13th, Wednesday. Yeah. Or 20th, which is No, Wednesday. 20th will be too, too far. This matter will have died. If members are available on the 13th, Chair, yes. or, or even if we have a, a really a conclusive position earlier than that, uh, there would be no need to hold that position once we finish the analysis. No, we would set, uh, because you know members are on recess and they have commitment, having a specific day would be fair. So, Mulanya? Uh, Uh, your mic, is it electricity? <laughs> no, Bonasiro. <laughs> yes, I'm saying 13th will be fair because it also gives us uh, time. Yes. Uh, within one week to, we'll have one week to look, to interrogate the matter further. Correct. So, uh, Waziri, you know 13th it will come. So if there is any of the organizations that uh, feel uh, that today is not the right time to be mentioned, I will tell you that in is just around the corner. And that day, uh, we must have conclusive information, however it is, so that it can help us, regardless of who is the cause, so that we, it can help us to solve this problem going forward. So you will, this will only serve to allow members to do more research on the matter so that they are also appraised very well on these matters before you appear before them. So I will take it that uh, on the 10th, you will only read the name of the course <laughs> of this particular uh, blackout. Uh, don't take us around, uh, round and round. Okay. So thank, you, thank you, Chair. The 13th, 13th confirm will be, will, be, will be here. Thank you. Okay. Chair. It's nice to be on Hansard. Yes. I just wanted to ask a question that yes. my brother asked, but uh, In a different without way. adding. Okay. Oh, no, no, he, he did an excellent job. Without adding anything else. Uh, Waziri, how long does it take to read the, the logs, to go through the logs of what transpired normally? A day or two? I don't know. Advice, please. Um, I, I don't think it is the, the reading of the, we have, like I said, we have so many logs from different systems and you then run those logs again as the other logs in different permutations to see the sequencing of events. So it is not really the reading of the logs. It is confirming what triggered what event, what happened before which event. And those are the analysis that we are talking about. Otherwise, we, all, we already have all the logs. And sometimes it calls for more locks which had not been called for because the system could be could have been it points to a different log a different system and therefore you call for more locks from those systems that that is what the engineers are doing so when you talk about 50 engineers they are not just there they are actually working into 10 11 o'clock at night to really zero in on uh, through those analysis chair thank you There are other questions that were asked by members. Let me at this stage uh, allow the PS to make one or two remarks, and then the engineer, Siror, engineer, the engineers with me, the regulator, can come in and uh, let's address.
questions and discounted that I can answer that those, I cannot answer those questions as a physicist. Uh, Mawale raised questions. Uh, we have uh, uh, Simon Kingara did raise some questions, Moshimua and Barongo, uh, Bonapies, and then the the CEO uh, Kenya Power. Thank you. Before you proceed, PS, you know there is also a, a concern by members that they are trying to attribute the delayed response on the staff morale. So as you take your questions, uh, Siron, you tell us, uh, are your staff demotivated to the extent that they went slow on, uh, on this particular, to almost a day to the second one, it this sort of is uh, uh, suspicious. So you need to tell us if you are okay with the staff or why it took that time, that much time. Chair, yeah, if you allow for it to be conclusive, you have just uh, arrived now and half. Um, actually, I don't know whether we still have emergency, emergency team in Kenya Power. I don't think we still have. That's me, Simon. Because prior to that day, where I live, near my home area, uh, a, a life wire had cut and it was there, down there for six hours. Actually, I could not leave before your people had come. I had to go to, to Royal Sam, but I don't want to mention people. Because it's a very busy road chair. The, the wire's life is swinging all over. Six hours, nobody is coming. You have touched a life now. All right, you can uh, proceed. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Waziri, for giving me the opportunity to probably contribute one or two things. Uh, Chair... I want to shed some light in regard to, uh, number one, our capacity in terms of thermal generation. Indeed, uh, before December uh, last year, the country's thermal capacity was 646 megawatts, but we have since retired two plants, the uh, three plants actually, that is Kipevu 1 with 60 megawatts, Kipevu 2 at 74, and the Muhoroni gas turbine uh, at 53 uh, so right now, our build capacity in terms of thermal plants that we can be able to uh, tell to come in any particular time is at 506 uh, megawatts uh, uh, against what was being dispatched then at around 244. So then your question on the, the, uh, the, the, the ability for our thermos to kick in uh, is also pegged with the question you had asked on automatic uh, uh, load shedding. I know our national control center, uh, we are able to automatically load shed in case of frequency uh, uh, issues. Uh, so um, I know Dr. Siror is going to delve more on this. But what I wanted to mention is what you asked about staff morale. Sure. Staff morale. Yeah. On, uh, but uh, before you go to that, eh? yes, you, our uh, thermos are now five. What? Five or six. Five or six. Yeah. Again, it's the two hundred and. Uh, we had a spinning that's... reserve of about two hundred and uh, yeah. and sixty-two. But you agree with me? Something could have been done with this available two hundred and something. Well, I think if uh, we were able to uh, automatically. Yes, but that is a question now. The engineers need to. Uh, to guide us further. No, we are paying, you know, uh, and, and, and you are the guys at the policy level, and Kenyans are paying, and uh, they, we pay capacity charge, and then the story has been, they, they are ready to kick in any particular time. It's either they kick in, or we load shed uh, halfway. At least we get to somewhere. Uh, so, so you see, the big question would be, this uh, 200 available, that were not uh, uh, on uh, were not part of the 244 were we paying something because there is a capacity charge for the ones that are not online automatically but they did not help us as in insurance so maybe like you said uh, that question is better handled by the engineers because we do not want this kind of lump sum blame kila mtu anabeba mzigo wake 
engineer abebe mzigo wake where you sit as a PS, you are not an engineer wewe fanya mambo ya eh, ile yako CS afanye yake wale nao my engineer watuambie kila mtu head of each department i mean where they are responsible unless we zoom in to the specifics then we are going to be blaming the wrong individuals for the wrong things so but i wanted it to be on record that we had some available over 200 megawatts by the time we lost some 200 and something which caused total blackout when we still had some idle available power that could still have kicked in when we still had an opportunity to load shed part of because kenya at that time was consuming almost 100 1900 megawatts right but we only lost 200 and something so has losing everybody because of 200 means that there is a problem with their systems that one we must agree you can proceed with the with the issue of the staff moral please yes and uh, on that particular day uh, our, our cabinet secretary and I, we went to the national control center we actually uh, stayed with the in the national control center for about five hours uh, when the, the engineers were uh, busy uh, uh, restoring the system and uh, i want to put it on record that uh, the staff morale was is 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 up because even those engineers who were off duty on that particular day we found them in the national control center they and we need to really commend uh, the engineers at the national control center because uh, i i we we actually saw, found some in uh, clothes that would, meant that they were already at home they were not at work and uh, they just uh, uh, picked their cars and drove straight to the national control center so that tells you something that those are engineers who are already motivated and engineers who are who who give sacrifice in order uh, to ensure that the national grid is stable so in terms of uh, this uh, morale uh, of the engineers and a commendation i really commend them uh, from here i want to ask uh, engineer siror uh, Dr. Siro, probably you can take up the other uh, two or three questions that have not uh, been uh, answered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Even, even as Siro comes in, uh, I want uh, Dr. Siro to really delve more into why we took so long to bring back the system because of the challenges of backfeed or the black start. What, when we showed the table about the other really black starts, uh, which we showed, uh, in the other historical blackouts would come up in, within an hour or two and the country would be up running. What was the unique feature on this particular day? Why did we take 18, 19, 20 hours? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Chairman. Yeah, I, th I will deal with the questions that you've asked. One of them is the issue of why wasn't there load shedding? If we talk about an electrical system, and I think uh, the CS did mention about it, there are quite a number of advanced protection systems. We actually have a whole array of protection to ensure that the equipment is protected, the people are protected, and that if there is an area which has an issue, it's isolated so that it doesn't affect the rest. Now, in talking about that, maybe just to shed a little bit light, and I'm happy that I'm talking to an engineer. If you look now within possibly a substation setup and looking at the equipment in a substation yard, the key protection systems that we mainly use is differential, which is just looking at, maybe for simplicity, if 200 amps is entering an equipment, you would expect if there is no loss and if the voltages are the same, then what you'd also be leaving is 200 amps. Now, the protection system under the differential would be comparing what has gone into the equipment and what is coming out. Now, if there is a serious difference between what is going in and coming out, the protection system will know that there is a fault in this equipment or there is a shot or that current is going elsewhere. And that is now what tells, and the protection relay, will actually tell the two breakers, which are always on either side of, uh, of the equipment, to open and isolate this equipment 
because possibly there is a shot and it is damaging. There are many others, but let me just uh, mention one before I leave that area so that now we can come to what, why that did not happen. If you are dealing with a transmission line, Chairman, what the two main protection schemes that are used is what is called distance protection and also at times differential. A distance protection looks at if this line is loaded to full capacity, what level of current is expected to be flowing. Because if there is a shot, the level of current or the quantum is going to be much higher than would be the case if it's just carrying normal load. And uh, in so doing, of course, it will calculate the impedance per kilometer and even possibly even tell you the approximate distance if there is a shot or if there is an earth fault and all that. Now, the two key things which are monitored by NS system chairman is the voltage and frequency. Of course, there is overcurrent. If the current is too high, then it trips. But the two things that the NS system will always monitor is the voltage and the frequency. The frequency in Kenya is meant to be 50 hertz. Now, depending on the transmission or the distribution voltage, if it's a 220 kV substation, it's going to look at whether it's around 220 for the voltage, but the frequency will always be monitored. Now, there are set limits where if the frequency drops, then it determines the level of load shedding to implement. Now, if the, vo if the frequency drops too much, and that means you've lost a very big generation or a very big load, what then happens would be a change in frequency that is too high that cannot be mitigated by load shedding. And you would realize that the CS did mention that the system lost 190 megawatts in 150 milliseconds. That was a very short period of time. And the total quantum was 270 megawatts. If you look at the quantum, that is 270 megawatts, vis-a-vis -vis the generation at that time, it was about 15%. Now, when you lose 15% at an instant, no system, at least the, uh, in the level that we have, would actually survive it. And I think what even was sent to chairman was that we usually have an interconnection with Uganda. And ordinarily, when there is a disturbance, the more systems you are interconnected with, the more resilience or the more the system can recover and stabilize itself. But now it did happen at a time when that link was not operational. And in, so that meant that the only system which could stabilize was our own grid. And given that the quantum of the power that we lost was 15%, the frequency drop could not actually be sustained. Yes, you can have these other spinning reserves, but the whole issue would be the time it will even take for them to come up would be shorter than the period which are set for the frequency to be maintained at that level. That is to say, there was, there was, there was, like, 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 and the issue of the equivalent load shed shedding equivalent to the lost generation. So for the fault is okay, we understand uh, these things happen. What we are looking at is how you handle the issue of the fault. It yeah. takes time for a new generation to come online. It is okay, it is understood. But then why is it that the same system that sees a fault, isolates a generation, is not able to isolate a switch on the side of the load. You see, that's a, the kind of, a, if it takes 10 milliseconds to switch off a, a breaker so that you protect a generator, with, now how is it different from this other, other breaker which is supposed to isolate a load because at the end of the day, these things that are changing, they are changing because there is imbalance between the generation and the load. Absolutely. So, if then, assuming that you are generating at uh, 2,000 and you lost 100, the 100 will cause imbalance. True. So, suppose then you disconnect 100, you are already at 19, against 19. So, what we are saying is that because we, are going, we must understand, we must live with these faults. True. They will happen. There is no perfect system. They will happen. But uh, there has to be a way so that the amount of time X that it takes to identify a fault and disconnect a generator, then that same amount of time 
is the same amount of time required to load shed part of the load so that you do not cause a lot of imbalance in the system. So unless then if we don't take any action, obviously then imbalance will now cascade downwards and every other generator will protect itself. They are only protecting is themselves because there is an overload. So the question is, is, suppose there was no overload in the first place, or if you are able to address the overload, then we are solving the problem. Chair. Thank you so much, Chair. Chairman. There is a member to... Chair. to make allow, Chair, no, so I, I request you to allow me to use the parliamentary norms <coughs> in communication and discussion by also quoting what he has said. He has said he's, oh, he's talking, he's glad he's talking to an engineer. So, uh, some of us might have been here for six years in this committee and have full knowledge of everything that you have mentioned and discussed. So, you are in front of the committee <coughs> that has more, more members than what you, are, you indicated that you... In the, C, the CSA indicated that um, we lost 190 megawatts in 15, mm, no, in 100, 150 milliseconds, and you've come and uh, broken it down to 15%. The systems, are the systems not set up to be able to, regardless of the weight, I think a system should be able to find a way to turn off that portion even if it's 15 percent turn it off so that doesn't affect the others and that will probably bring, bring a, a blackout in a given area or in a given section instead of bringing allowing it to uh, bring blackout in the entire country <laughs> 